Hi, thank you for joining me on this episode of Learn Sitecore. My name is Anastasia Flynn, and today I'm going to talk about Jamstack. So what exactly is this developer acronym turned industry buzzword that makes choosing presentation images so easy? Some people think that Jamstack is about embracing JavaScript as the magic solution to all web challenges. That's a bit of a misconception. It is true that the origin of Jamstack comes from the acronym for JavaScript APIs and markup. But as more of the web adopted Jamstack for its benefits, it became clear that it's the underlying architecture principles that matter, not the specific stack choices. In line with this thinking, in early 2020, Jamstack.org updated their site to spell Jamstack with only a capital J, rather than capitalizing the entire Jam acronym. This means that using JavaScript APIs and markup does not automatically guarantee that an app is a Jamstack app. And conversely, an app can be a Jamstack app even if it doesn't use JavaScript. Let's look at an example of the former. How does a traditional non-Jamstack site work? We'll start at the beginning of the flow. Here we have our web application. The backend code base can be C-sharp, Ruby, JavaScript, anything that runs server-side. The implementation language doesn't affect the architecture. The app code is compiled, optimized, and deployed to a web server, where it can process incoming requests. When a user visits a URL, the request is routed to the web server, which uses information from the request to fetch appropriate data from the database. Database access is typically the most time-consuming of all the server-side operations. And though I only have one database call depicted in this diagram for simplicity, it's common to need to fetch data from multiple integrations when composing that initial markup. So likely, we're talking about multiple points of database access. With database data in hand, the app generates HTML to send back to the client. This could contain client-side JavaScript that retrieves additional data by making asynchronous calls to APIs or back to the main app. As you can see, this scenario has JavaScript APIs and markup, but this is not Jamstack. That's because the markup is generated at the time when the server is responding to a request. So the end user is stuck waiting until all these steps are executed. This is how we end up with long page load times and poor user experience. The traditional approach to mitigating this has been to implement caching, which significantly improves load time for subsequent requests. And note that I'm not talking about browser caching, which only benefits users who've already visited the page, but application level or routing level caching, which benefits all users who will visit the page in the future. But let's look at an alternative approach to solving this, the Jamstack approach. What Jamstack architecture focuses on is separating application runtime from HTTP request processing. In this configuration, the server doesn't wait for a request to come in to begin rendering the app and generating markup. Instead, it does all this ahead of time, typically triggered by code deployment. This process is called pre-rendering. It enables generated markup to be stored in static files, which are deployed to content delivery networks. The CDNs, in turn, take over the responsibility of responding to HTTP requests, which they can do much faster. The fact that the markup is static does not mean that the app itself must be static. Client-side JavaScript can still make asynchronous calls to APIs and serverless functions to fetch dynamic data for user interactivity. This is called rehydration. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so we've switched traditional caching out for CDNs. Doesn't that pretty much do the same thing? What's the big deal? That's a fair question. It's tougher to argue that the Jamstack way is significantly better if we're solely talking about effect on page load speeds. But with its decoupling of client-side from the backend application, there's more to love about Jamstack than just blazing fast page speed. Something developers really love is the tooling. The need to support pre-rendering has given rise to a new class of front-end frameworks called static site generators. These frameworks facilitate and standardize the building and deploying of web apps. They handle many of the server-side JavaScript tasks that teams have had to handle themselves. For individual developers, this lowers the barrier to entry by cutting down on the number of skills to learn up front. For teams, this makes the code base easier to maintain and reduces onboarding time, thereby leading to more productive iterations. 
By relying on CDNs to ensure delivery speed, developers can spend less time working on app performance. This also leads to cost savings for the product owners by eliminating or reducing the number of backend servers needed in production. A decoupled backend is more secure since there's no active connections to a server or database. So, developers can spend less time working on security. Less time working on infrastructure means more time to build client features. For end users, Jamstack apps provide a better experience by enabling faster load times and more interactivity. And good UX increases conversions and revenue. As far as Jamstack cons, build time rendering can be seen as a drawback since it increases the time needed to publish a new version of the app. Additionally, the level of JavaScript expertise needed to implement Jamstack apps can also be seen as a drawback for teams who are new to it. I think the most significant con is the lack of personalization for end users, since pre-rendered markup cannot be user aware. Fortunately, frameworks like Next.js are enabling hybrid approaches, pre-rendering for pages where user context is not needed and server-side rendering for pages that do. So in summary, Jamstack is an architecture approach, not an actual technology stack. Anchors of Jamstack architecture are pre-rendering cacheable static assets at build time whenever possible, deploying those assets to CDNs for fast delivery, and keeping sites interactive by using client-side JavaScript to fetch data asynchronously and rehydrate the DOM. Jamstack apps are performant, scalable, and secure, and developers love working on them. The main trade-off is having to give up personalized user-specific content. To learn more about Jamstack architecture, check out these sites. Thank you for watching. See you next time.